why now in our human story? There is a teaching that has been in nearly every family from a name that is known by nearly every family. And that name is Yeshua or Jesus. And his teachings are in the most part that of love, charity and union. And we have tried from a certain space of consciousness to make those teachings work and we are largely unable to. I believe it's because the teachings have been actually forgotten. For all we have them in front of us, a deeper element of them has been forgotten. And the system we live in is the reason for that. And the matrix we are in has, has kept us separated from what Yeshua was pointing at. And we have been unable to fully manifest in our human story. You see, the, the matrix of the system takes the human organism and teaches it a linear, progressive state of consciousness. It teaches it from being a child, our human organisms. It takes them, at least in the West, in the education systems, and it says, at the end of school, you will get it. At the end of college, you'll get it. At the end of university, you will get it. In retirement, you will get it. And beyond there, in religion, it's for some. In death, you will get it. And so this is a linear state of consciousness. And this, in the human organism, creates a linear progressive self-image. And this linear progressive self-image is the very thing that Jesus was opposed to in the experiences I've had that you would call, some would call mystic or supernatural. I see them as very normal human experience. You, you begin to see that Yeshua was opposed to this linear self-image that we are creating. The body creates this linear self-image. I've said this many times. Birth certificate, nationality, name, academic achievements, career path, and it builds up all these different labels and images to formulate a linear self-image. Yeshua, however, pointed at escaping that with the term rebirth is how I perceive this. Yeshua and his disciples were followers of the way in the Aramaic language. That's what they called themselves. So what is that way for us? If they were following a way, what is the way for us as well? Yeshua I am certain pointed at the escape from that linear self-image that we create and is held in place by the matrix because in doing that you create a space in the human that can't center in the connectivity of the presence of God. I've used this quote a lot recently but it's so perfect. Meister Eckhart Nothing in this world is as close to God as stillness. Our children are being taught to separate from alignment with the presence of God because the presence of God is a timeless state of consciousness. The piercing, transformational experience that, that, that many would label mystic of the mystic rebirth, of the alteration in human consciousness not a set of rules to add on to a linear self-image. Nationality, academic, career, born-again Christian. 
these born again rebirth rules are beautiful and needed to create on the physical a set of rules to ensure the body is not behaving how it shouldn't it's it's a beautiful thing but the transformational consciousness the the presence of god is absent from many of those persons lives the rebirth is the actual presence of god in consciousness and that is without time and therefore it transcends language because language is linear and so by its very nature incorporates time within it this rebirth state of consciousness is an overwhelming change and i speak as if i've touched it because of an experience this human organism has in its memories i feel the state of consciousness that I fell into, which I'll try to verbalize now when I fasted 40 days and 40 nights, is exactly the state of consciousness that Yeshua is pointing at with the term rebirth. I, I'm, I'm so certain of this. When I did those long fasts, I did so because I was tired of a part of me that was disconnecting me from contentment, love and joy. And, and I said, okay, if God is there, let me mimic what Yeshua did and see. And I did. And what I can only describe happened to me was that the human organism talking to you had had enough of playing with the illusion of a self-image that the matrix and this linear progressive state of consciousness had given it. It had had enough of it. And so the human organism in this fast hit the sleep button on every element of that persona and it was as if the mind was gone and the brain was free and so every morning as I woke up instead of my voice trying to control the day there was a stillness and another voice that came and that voice was coming from far deeper than any linguistic framework or any analysis or calculation that my mind used to do it was it was as if the mind had moved into the heart and that voice was coming in in different ways synchronicity synchronicity uh, sometimes clairaudible it, it sometimes from just an inner knowing an inner knowing that was always there but not heard because of the chatter of this linear self-image persona that occupies most of our minds most of our brains it was as if the human organism had had enough and hit sleep button on it and kicked it out. And so the organism was left and now what is remaining from there, now that there's no more seeker, there's no, there's no seeker to search for God because there's silence in the mind. There's no character to search because there's silence in the mind. What remains is the voice of the soul, the voice of God. And it is an emptiness that is whole and full. It is a vessel finally free of the clutter of this linear self-image and vibrating with a love it felt so piercing, so overwhelming, so beautiful, so peaceful that I can only label it the presence of God. There's no other word strong enough. And so now this state of consciousness, you are anatomically as a human organism surrendered to the will of something beyond any self-image. Because the self-image was asleep. I, I couldn't even bring it up if I wanted to. And I, I felt like I was almost falling, like in a dream where you jump and you go tremendously high or, or you're scrambling around and you're not really touching the earth. It, it kind of felt that way for a while because I was, I was scrambling inside reality all of a sudden and the, the, the normal self-image that would calculate things was gone and, and therefore I, I felt like I was a few inches outside of my body in this new profound love that was carrying me was the the director of my actions 
and it's hard to word it because it was a timeless experience. Certainly days were passing, the moon was coming and going, and the sun was coming and going, but the experience as that awareness, as the, the unconditional loving witness, which is another word for your soul, it was timeless. And in that timelessness, there was a, a bathing, a nourishing of the love from God. I believe that state of consciousness is referenced as the humble, perhaps. Because not to say I, I was humble, this is not what I am doing. I'm trying to say the human organism, through, through no interference, no ownership of a person, it's very hard to explain this, the human organism was empty of a person and I had no responsibility for that as a person you may conjure me to be. It was just an occurrence, an arising from the organism. In the Bible it says that God only guides the humble. What's the perfect depiction of a humble person before God? Surely it's a human being where all self-image has been surrendered. It's gone. Even the element of the self-image that might think it can surrender itself, it's gone. So it's just, it's just eliminated. And there the vessel says, let the will of a higher love govern the activities of my hands and feet. Let the will of unconditioned love govern what I do. That would be my definition of humility, an empty vessel. And so that state of consciousness, its opposition is pride, and pride can only be born in the soils of a self-image. Most of you know that thanks to the love, support and sharing of the community that has followed us here on YouTube, we have been able to build a village for special needs children in crisis out in Tanzania. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children. Most of these children have disabilities and most of these children are among the most marginalized human beings in our human story. You have seen the suffering on this channel, I won't go over it, but these children had no access to housing, medical care, some were abandoned and they certainly didn't get quality care, some of them. It is only thanks to the love, support and the partnership of persons in this community that we have been able to make this family a reality that we have been able to bring these children out of the dark and into the light where they belong. To all who have partnered with what we do, thank you for your love and support. We simply can't do what we do without you. If you are not involved in our family and you are interested in helping us to eradicate this problem that we face inside the human story, eradicate this problem that these children are facing and don't need to face, then we have launched a new partnership program. If you visit www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership, you will see all of the details there. Ultimately, these partnerships help us to sustain our family, to provide everything we need to these children to make sure they are happy. And in return with that, we will provide you with regular updates and a newsletter every month as well. So as you can see exactly how your act of love and sharing is impacting the world and the lives of these children in the same way that I get to see it. Okay, that was all. Thank you for the love and support, guys. God bless you all. And so when Jesus said rebirth, I very much feel he was pointing to a state of consciousness that's being missed by many. And this state of consciousness is quite cleansing, quite healing, because you feel genuine unconditioned love just reverberating around and through and from and in you're just wrapped in it and and if it's accessible by one it's accessible by another and the reason i am certain this is the rebirth that has been forgotten in his teachings is that inside that state of consciousness a voice arose and i believe yeshua pointed at that voice by saying the holy spirit but while these things were happening to the human organism talking to you, I didn't have a Christian structure and framework to describe these events that were occurring from the organism organically off the back of 
fasting and praying and and trying to or, or becoming an organism that was empty of this linear self image that we all retain so 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 hardily <laughs> and this voice guided my life and led me blindly to a corner of the world where now we have seen miracles in my eyes a family of nearly 200 children nearly 200 dogs and we built a village from from nothing from the because of the love and support of you guys following us on this in this community but from from dust to where it is i as this organism talking to you i don't want to say john i don't want you to get oh he's taking ownership no the spirit of god moved so potently in the organism talking to you that the the john element was gone and it was a case of following that voice. And blindly, I had no idea, no idea why I was being told to go where I went in Tanzania. Thank you, God, for the love you have for humanity that you, that you did that. And so Yeshua was pointing at something that I believe is a guaranteed growth process awakening process of the human vessel the human organism that you are reborn by letting go of the linear self-image that you have constructed that when you are reborn the voice of god is there because you're empty to hear it and that he pointed at that voice with the term holy spirit beyond there things have arisen in my life in the last years where i was sitting here meditating one day and I had a pressure in my throat and out came a peculiar set of noises a language I later came to label it and it poured out of me and as it poured out of me my heart expanded my mind was so still and I could feel this presence of God this same presence deeply that I had felt in my long fast and since but it was powerful it was potent and this language just kept pouring out of me for nearly an hour. Yeshua pointed at that by saying, speaking in tongues. The Apostle Paul pointed at that manifestation through human consciousness and, and development as saying, praying with tongues. Others uh, in our modern world, this is arising inside the human organism they are but they are using different language to point at it. They're saying the language of spirit, or they are saying light language. But if you take the human organism that has been reborn, as in it has had some sort of ego death, some sort of ego integration, whereby now the, the, the soul becomes the loudest voice. And from there, that Holy Spirit, the voice of God, the presence of God speaks and, and guides it. And this is all happening to a human being. And over here, you have three different people. And all of a sudden, this human organism, now they start to speak in a strange language. And they explain that when they do, they get very still and they feel a great love and presence with them. And these three persons are pointing at that person with their words. And Yeshua says, he's praying in tongues. And another says he's praying in light language. And another says he's praying the language of spirit. They are pointing at, a, it, at an arising. The words point at the arising of the truth within the consciousness of the being, of the, of the, of the organism. And so this language has become a daily part of my life only in the last two years. And when it comes, I find great peace uh, I get visions from God to guide us I get synchronistic events that lead us to answers to our prayers I also clear unwanted energies with this language it is not that John is speaking a language it's that the human organism is so filled with spirit, the connection to God, and it says in the Bible, you will, these, these praying in tongues, 
is a discussion. It's a conversation between your soul and God. And the verbalization seems to just take the mind out again. It takes the mind out of the equation and the, any, any self-image. And when this happens, you feel the increased energy of spirit with you. You feel it. You feel this increased potency of love and, and, and stability and that anchor of God's presence. And sometimes when persons are carrying entities they should not, as Yeshua pointed at these entities, he said demons, evil spirits, I've recently pointed at them with higher dimensional negative forces. When this language comes out, you take these things and you see them sometimes as well. And that is the power of spirit, you see, that the power of spirit still, even if you've surrendered your self-image and had some sort of initial rebirth, you still then form a self-image, but hopefully now you form an integrated ego that's built around the unconditional loving witness, the unconditional loving awareness that is your soul. And, and that egoic identity still can pollute the potency, is how I perceive it, of the power of God, the power of spirit. And so when this language comes, the language of spirit, the, the speaking in tongues, as a Christian calls it, when that arises from the organism, it's like the spirit is fine-tuning the organism to ensure its channels are free, so as it can truly reverberate in its, in its entirety as best it can. And in those spaces, I see that we are able in that arising of human development to cast out demons or to purify these negative entities. Living your life as if there aren't these negative entities is a bad idea. It's a very bad idea. If you are looking at Yeshua's teachings, one third of everything he taught was about these entities. When I first fasted 40 days and 40 nights, I didn't know. But I know that when you fast, your vibration in God becomes so tight that the chaotic vibration of these entities can't enter you. But in the most part, they are affecting humanity daily. This is the problem that we face. And persons will say it's an archetype of the e archetype of the ego, does it manifest in another dimension in consciousness, whatever, I've seen them. To myself they look like a species, they have individual features, this is why I say that. But I have seen also God use the human organism that's talking to you and others around me to clear them from the area or from other humans who are suffering due to them. And so this again Yeshua is pointing at very real arisings in the human story. But what seems to be forgotten is that here is a human. And when that human releases the self-image that is linear, when that human humbles, the organism humbles before the presence of another voice than their own, when the ego has some sort of death or integration, This is happening to all humans. From there, the arising of a new state of consciousness comes. Timeless. Timeless consciousness, the presence of God. It's a state that can be experienced but barely described because language incorporates time. But this is part of the birth of the spirit man. And so a human goes through that. They release the self-image which is linear. They are born into a new timeless consciousness in the presence of God. There the voice of God can speak to them because the, the channels are not cluttered with the self-image and its analysis. It's truly a, a genuine arising in pure faith, not sight. From there, new gifts arise in different formats. In my own 
speaking a new language of spirit arose from the organism which is very beneficial and healing and beautiful and brings a lot of love and and helps to support what we do for these children it's a tool for the organism from there all of a sudden you recognize that the spirit is using the human organism to purify energies and entities around you this is all happening to humans who fall into the purity that is free of the self-image and Yeshua was pointing at that with his terminology rebirth uh, Holy Spirit casting out demons praying in tongues but the truth is that that's arising from the organism and the words we point at that with are of little importance so long as that's arising from within the organism and that's where we get lost and that's where we are lost because people care more about the words and the images they hold in their mind of those words than that transformation of the human that these words are pointing at but that transformation I believe from my own life going back from what I used to be like and my complete lack of faith to everything that has happened that that is that is required at this time for as many human organisms as possible so that the that that experience of unconditioned love and the traumas and the conditions that stop us from sharing that unconditioned love can be eradicated and wiped out and so in trust and beauty and love and faith we can walk as a species towards bringing in more unconditioned love to the world because we are experiencing an unconditioned love because we are experiencing the voice of the soul not the fearful voice of the linear personal uh, identity the legal person the birth certificate identity the self-image that is progressive that the matrix system has given us it needs an antidote and Yeshua with rebirth was pointing at that antidote I am I am certain of it this state of consciousness should be discussed and studied and and it should be explored in universities because it's it's potentially the only way to to redirect the whole of humanity into the loving arms of God so that each step is taken in compassion and and care for one another and charity and not for power and revenge and retaliation Christian nations retaliate with war because they're not truly Christian because they weren't truly reborn because persons didn't grasp that Yeshua was pointing at the transformation and instead they took the pointing and tried to build something with the words he was pointing from from the state of consciousness that he was giving you the pointer to liberate from the linear progressive self-image consciousness I really believe Yeshua's teachings have been forgotten for all present in everybody's life and I believe it because I've seen it happened to this organism in the memories I hold and it was through no will of an Englishman called John <laughs> that wasn't there the organism just shook that identity off it it was so tired of it it was so tired of it struggling I couldn't live with myself I is the soul and myself was this completely illusory arrogant prideful self-image that many of us carry and refuse to relinquish to God the one who knit us together in our mother's womb grew us from child to man and is beating our heart as I say this now this is why I believe Yeshua's teachings are forgotten and I believe a great remembrance is occurring right now where persons are willing to explore their consciousness and go within because warn to the lawgivers and the Pharisees for they do not enter within so they take away the keys to the kingdom 
and they stop those from going within who would. When you go within, you will see the illusion of the self-image. And when you see that illusion, finally your human organism will shake it off and will make space for the spirit and the presence of God and the voice of God to direct your life in a love, an experience of a love that words will never contain. <laughs> never. God bless, guys. I love you all.